Allegiance to the American flag, the pledge to the Christian flag, and the pledge to the Bible. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. And now the Christian flag. Oh no, remain standing, I'm sorry. <laughs> Thank you, Amy. Well, welcome this morning. Happy uh, early 4th of July, I guess. Today we celebrated. Uh, it's good to see everybody in the Lord's house this morning. Your announcements are in the back of your bulletin. There's not a ton of them. You can look through them there. Uh, kids fishing. We take, we've had two. We've had two so far say they're going. We'd really like to know who all is going. Now, granted, at 4 o'clock, if you haven't told me you're not going, I'm not going to say get out of here. But we're going to meet at 4 o'clock, July 15th, over at the FCC, and we'd really like a good group of kids to go with, uh, with us that day. Thank you again to Ricky for letting us use his pond. Do we have to put them back? No. Do we have to give you, like, 50% of the catch or after it's filleted and all that? There's that. <laughs> so if your child's interested in going, please, please, please let me know. Uh, we got youth camp coming up July 8th through the 12th. Tara and I are looking forward to that. It's going to be a fantastic time. We've got 34, 35 kids all together. Uh, big group be praying for the kids and us. Uh, I think it's going to be fantastic. We're going to meet at 2.30 on the 8th over at the FCC. I've got a trailer, so we've got plenty we don't have to worry about. <laughs> i got to tell the story now. So Tara sends me this picture and said, now this is what Paul and them did at Lockport. I think it was Lockport, wasn't it? And it was a you know, big trailer. 
And I was sitting there thinking, I said, wait a minute, I've got one of them. I've had one of them for a long time, but every year we say, how are we going to get all this luggage? we got to have extra people. So I finally remembered that it's sitting at my father-in-law's house, so we will have a trailer. Yeah, Tara's not going to let me live that one down. Uh, kids camp, July 22nd through 25th. Um, and remember to continue to bring items for the Blessings Box. It's been staying pretty full here lately there for a while. It, it's kind of easy to forget. And we, we are in the plans of getting a new box because I know that one's kind of getting hard to shut. So, uh, But please bring your items for that as well. And I think, Brother Jackie, you got a few words to say, don't you, sir? <laughs> oh, thank y'all for being here last week. I'm sorry that we couldn't be here. Uh, my wife decided she would uh, fall in the swimming pool and almost break her neck, but uh, uh, but uh, thank you for being here supporting Jamie, and uh, thank you for praying for us this week. It's been a really difficult week. Um, we've been praying for my brother for a long time, and uh, we really thought he would get better. I never dreamed that he was uh, going to pass away on us. So. Uh, Jimmy had cirrhosis of the liver, just like I had. Never, never drank, um, but uh, evidently we've got a, a genetic uh, disorder from our dad. My dad had cirrhosis at the age of 38, and uh, but my dad was an alcoholic, and the doctors thought that because he was an alcoholic, that uh, that's where his cirrhosis came from. So we never gave it a second thought. But then at 38, I became, uh, I had cirrhosis and. Of course, I got a transplant uh, right before it was too late. And several years ago, Jimmy was diagnosed with cirrhosis, but they told him that, uh, that he didn't need a transplant for another 10 years or so. But after his heart surgery, his cirrhosis just uh, really went downhill. And uh, unfortunately, um, he wasn't able to uh, survive. So over the weekend, he became very, very ill and uh, just didn't make it. So thank you so much for your prayers and your support, the many texts, calls. Um, Jack Balcom um, made the trip all the way to South Carolina for the uh, celebration service. And uh, appreciate that, Jack, so much. Uh, Mona was already in Anderson, and she came and, Always good to see a familiar face, and uh, so thank them. But thank you for praying for us and being there for us. And several of you made donations to Jimmy's uh, uh, funds that he requested to go to. He uh, he believed in helping others, and um, uh, one of those was a help center there that helps people that uh, cannot get uh, cannot get health care. It's a clinic there where you can walk in off the street and, and get medicine or taking care of your health needs. And he asked that funds go there or to the homeless to help feed the homeless. And several of you made donations to those two places, and we thank you so much. But most of all, thank you for praying for us and uh, supporting us during this very difficult time. In my entire life, I knew Barry and Mom having to bury her and have her funeral would be difficult, but I was prepared for that. Never prepared for this. Never in my lifetime prepared to bury my brother. But thank you so much for being there for us. God bless. Jamie's been on the phone with me constantly and talking to me and helping me through it, and I appreciate that. Uh, more than he'll ever know. Love you guys. Couldn't do it without a church, without the Lord. But uh, we, we love you and appreciate it. We certainly love you beyond words. You and Becky both. And prayers will continue to be there for comfort. Um, one last announcement. I don't know if I should say it this way or not. This is how I feel. 
I don't care if Hurricane Ike rolls through Franklinton. We're going to eat hamburgers and hot dogs, and we're going to shoot fireworks off. It's just going to happen. Today, it's going to happen. Yesterday, every time from 6 o'clock on, we were looking at the, at the radar. I wasn't the only one. Candan said she's doing the same thing. We were looking, and every time it come up, well, here's a batch coming through, here's a batch coming through. It was right up till about 12.30. And then it lied, lied, lied the rest of the day. But we got to spend some time together at a movie theater, which hadn't happened in forever with Grayson and, and his buddy and me and Amy. And, and so there are blessings to be taken out of that. Maybe there was a few of us that just needed to do something else that day. <laughs> I don't know. But, uh, but today is the day. Um, all right, we got any birthdays, anniversaries? Chris. <gasps> oh, yeah. Turn 24, didn't you? <laughs> 12, that's right. Got an anniversary? I don't even know. How many years? Uh-oh. <laughs> 11. Well, Tony, I get, it's an odd number, so I understand why. <laughs> well, let's see. Right. <laughs> Bentley? July. July. How old? Nine. Yeah, y'all come up here and turn around. I know you're way back there, but come on. All right, won't you stand? Let's sing anniversary first. Isaac's birthday, too. How old are you? Like, how old? Five. Five. Here we go. Sing happy anniversary. When you return to your seats, it's 6.30 in the book or it's up on the TV. Thank you. 
I know you're doing good. I'm proud of you. I'm so used to walking over there. I don't know. Scripture today comes from 2 Corinthians chapter 3, verse 17. Now the Lord is the Spirit, and where the Spirit of the Lord is, there is freedom. May God add his blessing to the reading of his word. Before we go to prayer today, we folks, there's a lot of people, a lot of sick, a lot of people that are just unsure right now and I I know we ask every week to, when we go to the Lord in prayer here that I just can't stress enough how much prayer works can't stress enough how much comfort 
that it brings to those that might not even know you're praying for them. So when we go, I want you to look over this list, and, and if they're not on this list, if they're in your mind, they're in your heart, now is the time I'd like for us to go to prayer for them. I want you to pray with me. Heavenly Father, we, we thank you so much for, for the so many blessings that you have placed upon us, Lord. But there are times that we're unsure. There are times that we feel lost, and there's times that that we feel like we're not able to help. Lord, I, it, it's my prayer today that, that, that you give us that wisdom to know the right words to say, to know the right times to be there, and just to know that if we let people see you in us, how much comfort that that can bring to them. Lord, everybody on this prayer list is, is going through ailments or suffering loss. And Lord, we've witnessed that here so many times, just in our little community. Lord, we're, I don't think we ever doubt that you are there with us. And Lord, I pray that anybody that does, that you open their heart and be with those who are, who are wandering and who are lost. Lord, I pray that you'd be with our kids this week as they, or next weekend as they go on to kids camp. Lord, it's such a beautiful time. It's such a wonderful time for not only the little ones, Lord, not only the ones that aren't so little anymore, but the, the adults, just the same. And I think that's what we need, Lord. We need a fire started within our hearts. Lord, I pray that this is an opportunity that that happens. And I pray that you'd be with all the counselors and all the leaders that go, but be with the youth and that their hearts get softened and opened up. Because, Lord, throughout our times on this earth, you are the ultimate healer. You are the one that is always there with us. Lord, I pray that, that as we go into this service, that, that we not only talk about America, but we glorify your name. Guide us and direct us as you would have us go. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. That'll do it right there. If that don't wake you up, nothing will. So I got asked this morning, are you singing this song? One of them was the trilogy. I said, no, I do that one an awful lot. The next one was, well, God bless USA, Lee Greenwood, no. And the stares I got, it's about like the one when you say there ain't no bulletin. It's the same stare. And daggers flying through there. What do you mean? Kind of like Christmas. You're not, if I didn't sing Oh Holy, or somebody didn't sing Oh Holy Night, whew, man, I got the answer for that one. So this is a song that I was going to do last year, actually, and I'd forgotten about it. And it just speaks to what I see, what I think the 4th of July means. I know what it means historically, but to me personally, I've had a lot of friends go into the service and had a lot of friends that knew of their families that never came back and gave that ultimate sacrifice. To me, that's what our flag stands for. Not necessarily one day, but the sacrifices that were made so that we could be here, so that we could be together in a free country.
the red, white, and blue and how each color was defined. Why we stand hand over heart and pledge allegiance every time. His dad pulled out a box with a folded flag. He said, trust me, son, it means way more than It's more than a flag, stars and stripes, yeah, it was for the ones who died and gave their lives so you and I could live our own. It stands for truth, it stands for grace, these colors don't run into this day, carry sacrifice and scars in every stripe and star. But the truth is, it's more than a flag. He said your granddad fought in Vietnam way back in 65. 350 second dropping bombs to lessen threats he had to fight. Got sent home in 71 with one less leg and a purple heart. Used to say, gave some, but some gave all, and that's what we're fighting for. I gave Grandma this box on the day he passed. Fired 21 shots, folded up that flag. It's more than a flag, stars and stripes, yet it weighs for the ones who died and gave their lives. So you and I can live our own. It stands for truth, it stands for grace. These colors don't run into this day. It carries sacrifice and scars and every star and stripe it has. You might know the definition, but the truth is it's more than just a flag. fight is there when we fall on foreign shores and ride at home yeah you know it's true that's why we bleed red and white and blue because it's more than a flag with stars and stripes yeah it weighs for the ones who died and gave their lives so you and i can live stands for the truth, it stands for grace. These colors don't run into this day. It carries sacrifice and scars in every stripe and star it has. You might know the definition, but the truth is it's more than just a flag. That's a good one. I like that song a whole lot. And today we do, we celebrate, I believe it's 247 years. If I'm wrong, somebody tell me. <laughs> 247 years as a nation that we call home, and officially in a couple of days, but today we celebrate that. And since I was old enough to talk, I have been so glad to have been born here in America, and I believe God has blessed us with some of the most beautiful landscape in the world. Just here in Kentucky, you've got a little bit of everything. Now, granted, for work, when you're driving through eastern Kentucky for a week, you think to yourself, if I don't see another mountain for a couple of days, I'll be all right, but, uh, but I truly believe it is a great place to call home, and we aren't a perfect nation. Compared to other places, though, I think we got it pretty good. And with that said, it can get pretty crazy around here at times. And uh, I wasn't going to read it, but I'm going to read it anyway. But I got to read you something I found when I was writing this sermon out. It's kind of old, 
but it, some of it kind of cracked me up. It's called Only in America. Only in America can you call and order a pizza and it get to your house faster than what you can make it. I don't know what pizza place this guy's talking to, <laughs> but I ain't found that place yet. And snappies, yeah, they, they're pretty quick. Only in American drugstores do you have to walk all the way to the back. The sick people have to walk all the way to the back to get the prescription. Healthy people can get the suntan lotion right in front of the store. <laughs> and this isn't true now, but back in the day, only in America do people order a double cheeseburger, large fry, and a Diet Coke. I had <laughs> that one has boggled my mind, and I'm guilty of it myself. Only in America do we leave cars and trucks worth thousands of dollars in the driveway and stack junk to the ceiling in a garage. <laughs> yeah, that, I felt attacked on that one. Last but not least, only in America do we use answering machines and voicemail to screen calls from people that we don't even want to talk to. I, that didn't always boggle my mind, too. But still, even with that, I believe America is the greatest nation. And I am so proud, just happy to be here. And even more, I feel so blessed that so many of those people that, that we talk about and we remember decided to give their lives or put their lives on the line, staying away from their families for months, sometimes years, so that we can sleep under the blanket of peace. What does concern me is how do we keep America a great place to live and raise our families. The Apostle Paul lends some advice on just how to do that. It's second, 1 Timothy chapter 2, verse 1 through 4. I urge then, first of all, that requests, prayers, intercession, and thanksgiving be made for everyone, for kings and all those in authority, that we may live peaceful and quiet lives in all godliness. And holiness. This is good and pleases God our Savior who wants all men to be saved and to come to a knowledge of the truth. So if I'm understanding this right, we need to pray for not only America, but our leaders. And that's tough to do sometimes. It's really tough to do sometimes. With all the divisiveness in the political world, do you ever just stop and pray? For that leader I know there's many times that I'm watching the TV and I go did they just say that out loud is that how they really feel and is the first instinct in my mind to pray for them because that's what we need to do and I know it's tough sometimes but as I've mentioned before it's when you think of all the patriots that, that have fought and died for our freedom I think it's the least that we can do is to pray for America and our leaders. And I say it not to say it like it's something little. That's powerful. You have a nation that's praying all at the same time. There's a whole lot of stuff that could get done. A whole lot. And it's not only because I think it. It's kind of right here, right? It's right there in that verse. The groundwork for our freedom has been laid over these last 247 years, and we enjoy that freedom because of our founding fathers, for our fathers, our mothers, our daughters, our sons, our brothers, and our sisters, because they fought to preserve the freedom. But above all else, because of the many blessings that God has spread upon this nation. And... That's where it gets iffy. There's a lot of churches today that would not celebrate this day. There's a whole lot of churches that won't allow it. They won't let you come in. And, and, and Carl and I, and I have had that conversation. He knows some folks that said, hey, don't even mention that in here. Don't even say anything about that here. But we got to be real careful to not put America in front of God. And I do agree with that 100%. There's a lot of people that, there's something that makes my blood boil, and there's not a whole lot of things that I get super mad about. 
Right? I might get a little irritated, but I don't get super mad at a lot of things. But when I turn on the TV and I see somebody standing on the American flag, my blood boils. But how do you feel when you've seen them take the Ten Commandments out of the courthouse? Did your blood boil then, or did you say, oh, gosh, that's awful, and then go about your day? That's where we have to be careful. When our anger is more over the flag than it is the Word of God, I can get, I get it. And some would argue that we're not a Christian nation today, and, and they may well be right, but this nation, some will say, was this nation founded on Chris, Christian principles, and that's a debate that goes on for days and days and days. I personally believe that it does, and I'll tell you why. That's, and I'm not going to debate it or argue it today because, well, we've got to shoot fireworks later and y'all got to cook side dishes. So, so, but history tells us that Thomas Jefferson referred to the Declaration of Independence as a reflection of the American mind. In that document, the founding fathers acknowledged God as a source of our rights. And these days, yeah, there's... There's those who uh, think that the gentlemen way back then were fighting over freedom from religion. There's a huge difference of freedom from religion and freedom of religion. So if we're going to continue to preserve the freedom that we enjoy today, we, the church, God called people, we're going to have to learn to pray for America and its leaders. Next thing we got to do is we got to live righteous lives. And I'm not so blind that, that I see that our nation has strayed away from God's word. And, and one of the worst ways that it's done that is many of our leaders have tried to take God out of everything, not just school, not just here or there, everything. Never in my lifetime did I think that just saying God would strike such anger in a conversation. Never in my lifetime, I, I remember a couple of years ago, we were watching, I was watching something on one of the news channels, which I try not to do, but sometimes I just can't help it. And they were showing it was either, I can't remember if it was the House or Senate, it was on the floor. And somebody, one of the representatives said, hey, maybe this is something we should take back and pray over. And whoever was leading that meeting said, God has no place in here. If you ever wondered what's wrong with some of society, that's it. That's the, that's the billboard for what's wrong. And the way, <laughs> the way we should be is taking everything to God. And for Christians, it's, it's tough because of the way that we're looked at sometimes. We talk about living righteous lives, but, and I'm sorry, not sorry, but I believe we bring a whole lot of that on ourselves. The view that Christians have falls directly on us at times. For, <laughs> for as long as I can remember, Christians have been called hypocrites. It's pro I bet I've heard that. I can't tell you. I, mean, I wish I had a dollar or a dime for every time because I'd be rich. But here's, here's kind of the way that I see it, and I hope I don't mention anybody's actual name, but I don't think I will. But uh, look, everybody's getting scared. What's he talking about? If Uncle Gene Roy goes out one night and sees Cousin Bob Joe just falling down drunk, he's partying like a wild animal, he's hit on every other girl except his wife, and then the next night, Cousin Bob Joe goes out and points fingers at Uncle Gene Roy for taking the family inheritance to the casino and getting it all out. And then they come to church that Sunday morning, set two pews apart, throw some money in the plate, but they're Christian. That paints an ugly picture. Man, I hope there's not an Uncle Gene Roy out there somewhere. But... <laughs> But that paints an ugly picture because to those who are watching, and guess what? Somebody's always watching. 
there ain't a corner you can go to, that there ain't a camera, a cell phone, something. And here's the, the big kicker. It don't matter how far you dig into this ground and cover it up, God still sees it. You can't get away from it. You can tell yourself for a while that you can get away from it, but you can't. Somebody's always watching, whether you're living that lifestyle or not. Now, individually, there's not a lot that, that one can do to stop the movement to eliminate the name of God in our government or certain places in the world, but there is something we can do to keep sin from dishonoring his name, especially if I can turn to it in my Bible. Proverbs chapter 14, verse 34. Righteousness exalts a nation, but sin is a disgrace to any people. Sin has disgraced God's name and our nations. Jackie mentioned a few weeks ago about marriage and divorce. In Christian homes, hovering around 50%, half. It's a staggering number to me. Teen pregnancies, half of which statistically, and this one's even worse, ends up in abortions. Since 1976, child abuse is up 240%. And some people would say, well, you know, they, they didn't keep that good of records. No, that's not what it is. It's not what it is at all. Sin has disgraced our nation and God, and that's something we can do something about. I believe it was in 1 Timothy, the verse that I read. That ain't it. For kings and all their authority, that we may live peaceful and quiet lives in all godliness and holiness. It doesn't just say to do that Monday through Thursday. It doesn't, it, it, it's all the time. Last but not least and possibly most important is we need to share Christ. We need, to, we need to share Christ with others, share the word, share the love, share the light of the Lord in everything that we do. And I know sometimes, man, it, sometimes in coaching, I'll, you know, that goofy kid, just, they'll say some things, and, and I, I'm sorry, and I probably shouldn't be this way, but I have a very warped sense of humor sometimes. There are things that are said that I probably shouldn't laugh at, and I'll giggle and go, mm, and really have to hold it in. And sometimes there'll be some conversations in that dugout, and I'm over here like, oh, and then I go, whoa. And I have to rein it in and hold myself back a little bit because they're watching. They're seeing it. Well, Coach Dingle thinks it's funny. It's little things like that. They have to be able to see that I have Jesus Christ in my heart. When we go out into the community, they need to see that not only did you go to church Sunday, but every day is church for you. Every day needs to be church. It's not just one hour on Sunday morning. It's every single day. When you wake up in the morning, I highly urge you to do this because it does help. As soon as your feet hit the floor, start talking to God. Start praying to God. And start letting others see. Don't be afraid to go to a restaurant and bless the food at the table. Don't be afraid to go up to somebody you know is hurting and say, can I pray with you? Worst they're going to do is say no, and you go pray for them anyway. You need to let them see the love for Jesus Christ and not so much the love of this world. I did a little research, and according to one study, there are over 2.6 billion Christians in the world today. 2.6 billion. That's a quarter of our population, according to the latest census. One-fourth of this world claim to be Christian. Now, you would think that we might be able to make a little bit of noise with 2.6 billion people. But rarely are we the loudest in the group. 
very seldom, or, and I'm not saying to go out, because I can see it happening now. <laughs> we was watching Jamie on Facebook the other day, and he said, go out here in the street and start screaming. That's not what I'm saying. But simply spreading the word of God in a loving way and showing others what Jesus Christ looks like. That's it. It's that simple. And if 2.6 billion people did that, do you think the world would be just a little bit different? Just a little bit different. And you know, it's, it's my prayer a, a whole lot of days that this nation get reclaimed for God. And I know that sounds negative, and I do believe it is the greatest nation. I I'm, I'm, couldn't be happier to be from here and live here and raise my kids and family here. But I do think that it's coming a time that it, it needs to be reclaimed for God. And here's another thing. If it doesn't, we're in trouble. Psalm 33, 12 says it better than anything. Blessed is the nation whose God is the Lord, the people he chose for his inheritance. So, yeah, it's, it's my prayer that, that we reclaim it for God, and I believe we can do it if we pray for America and its leaders, if we live those righteous lives if we, and stand on the principles of God's word and shine forth that light of Christ who lives within you, within you. you he, he doesn't stay at home when you go to the grocery. He doesn't stay you know, anywhere. He's within you all the time, and that's power. That's a power that 2.6 billion people should have. I wanted to end today with a quote that I found from uh, it's billygram.org or someone had written a question into the website. It said, I'm from another country and am visiting some of my relatives here who are in graduate school. I asked them what uh, your festival on July 4th means, but they weren't sure. Does it have something to do with your Christian religion? The answer was July 4th commemorates the day in 1776 that our nation declared itself to be an independent nation and no longer a colony of England. On that date, several of our leaders signed what is known as the Declaration of Independence, stating our determination to become a free country. Our independence did not come easily. Only after several difficult years of war would it finally be won. Nor were our first years as a nation free from problems and controversies, as is still true. But our forefathers were determined to establish a free and democratic system of government and the Declaration of Independence together with our Constitution and the Bill of Rights became the foundation for this. They have stood the test of time and on July 4th we give thanks for the wisdom and faith and courage of those leaders. Although it is not a religious holiday like Christmas or Easter, for many Americans July 4th is a time to reflect on God's goodness to us as a nation. Molded into the Liberty Bell in Philadelphia, which proclaimed our independence, are these words from the Bible. Proclaim liberty throughout all the land until all inhabitants thereof. Leviticus 25.10. Our legal system reflects our Judeo-Christian roots. And while we look with gratitude to the past on this July 4th, may we also look in faith to the future and commit it and our lives to God and his will. And the ancient words of the psalmist are still true, just what I just read you. Blessed is the nation whose God is the Lord. And as we go out and we celebrate, and we go and we do these things, and we, we're with family and, and friends, I want you to remember, it's okay to celebrate that to me. And in my opinion, there's nothing wrong with celebrating that. As long as God stands out front and leads us through that. As long as we don't take America and say, America comes first, God comes second, then I think we're going to be okay. And if, if there's any inkling or any doubt in your heart of whether you know Jesus Christ well enough to have conversations with him even, 
today's the day I want you to look in your heart. And I want you to speak to him and I want you to pray with him. Pray to him so that he may come in so that you can accept him as your Lord and Savior. Won't you pray with me? Heavenly Father, we thank you so much for what's turning out to be a beautiful day. And Lord, I, I just pray that all the celebrations are safe, that everybody stay safe and healthy and strong. But Lord, I, I also pray for those that have lost loved ones who fought and died for this country. But we thank them so much for all the effort that they've put in to preserve our freedom, Lord. But our freedom is not freedom without you. No matter what we do, no matter how this country turns out, if we know you in our hearts and we accept Jesus Christ as our Lord and Savior, we are free. No ifs, ands, or buts about it. Lord, I pray that you take us out this week and maybe we share a word or two from your holy word with someone who may have not heard it before. And Lord, if there's anyone that has that doubt in their mind, even if they don't walk up here, Lord, as long as they talk to you, as long as they, they repent and they, and they know that they need you in their life, well, I'm okay with that. Lord, I pray that you guide and direct us in all the ways that you would have us go. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Won't you stand? We can sing our hymn of benediction. Or invitation, sorry.